This is the sew along for Green Style's Reef Sweatshirt. In this sew along, I will be sewing the half zip collared view with the optional zipper garage, guard, and thumb hole cuffs. The reef requires up to two yards of mid to heavyweight sweatshirt fabric with at least 20% horizontal stretch. Rib knit is optional for the waistband, cuffs, and insets. And number five, closed bottom zipper at least 15 inches long is needed. Also, interfacing with two-way stretch is required. For the half zip, cut the front B1 on the fold and front side inserts B2 mirrored. Mark the horizontal pocket line and notch for the zipper. On the wrong side, draw a line down the middle center from the neckline to the zipper notch. For the back, cut the upper back B3 and middle back B4 on the fold and side backs B5 mirrored. For the sleeves, cut S1 and S2 mirrored, marking the notches at the upper sleeve. The pattern contains an optional zipper garage C3 and zipper stop. The fold will be on the shorter edge of the pattern piece. Mark the notch on the guard. For the pocket, cut the pocket in the fold and two mirrored two, two. pocket facings. The waistband consists of two pieces, the back C2 and C1, the front waistband piece, which is cut on a fold. For the collar, cut two C4 outer front collar pieces mirrored one C5 outer back collar, and one inner collar C6 on the fold. If doing the optional thumb hole cuff, cut two C7, mark the four notches down the length. Lastly, cut the knit interfacing pieces. Cut one strip one and a half inch wide for the zipper that will extend from the collar to one inch past the zipper notch. Cut one side of the zipper guard, cut two one by four and a half inch strips for the outer collar and one full inner collar piece. If using thin fabric, consider fully interfacing both the inner and outer collar. Place the upper back pattern piece right side down on the middle back pattern piece. Pin in multiple locations along the curve This time, you can also pin the side back pieces right sides together onto the middle back piece along the curve. Repeat for the other side. All seams will be sewn with a 3 8 inch seam allowance using a stretch stitch or a serger unless otherwise noted. Press the side seams towards the middle and the top yoke seam toward the neckline. For this pattern, we recommend using a cover stitch for stretchier fabrics or a walking foot for less stretchy fabrics to cop stitch seam lines for an elevated look. Place the front and back sleeve pieces right sides together along the long edge. So with a 3 8 inch seam allowance, seam allowance toward the back sleeve to top stitch if desired. Pin the upper front inserts right sides together along the curve of the main front piece. The wider part will be at the bottom. Repeat on the other side.
and sew. Press the seam allowance towards the center and top stitch if desired. To prep for the zipper, press the knit interfacing to the wrong side of the front bodice. The interfacing will extend at least one inch past the zipper mark. If using the recommended number five zipper, sew a basting stitch with a 3 8 inch seam allowance down one length around the bottom of the line and back up the other side. If using a more narrow zipper, sew down the length of the zipper with one quarter inch seam allowance, but around the bottom of the zipper mark with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Again, please note the rectangle will extend 3 8 inch past the zipper mark for all zipper sizes. Do not sew through the zipper mark. Cut down the center line, stopping at the zipper mark. From there, cut out at a 45 degree angle to the corners of your basted rectangle. With the back bodice laying right side up, place the long edge of the sleeve along the back sleeve curve of the bodice. Pin in multiple locations along the curve. The sleeve should fit at a one-to-one -one ratio. Repeat for the other sleeve and sew. Press the seam allowance to the sleeve side and top stitch if desired. Place the arm side of the front bodice right sides together along the front curve of the sleeves. Pin in place. And so. Press the seam allowance toward the sleeve side and top stitch if desired. So the outer front collar pieces to the outer back collar piece, checking that you have aligned the non-interfaced side to the outer back collar. And press the seam allowance out towards the lateral sides, top stitch if desired. Take the assembled bodice and mark the center of the neckline. Be sure the longer edge of the collar is against the neckline of the bodice. Align the pieced outer collar to the center back of the neck. Align the center front of the collar to the cut centered zipper line of the bodice. Pin in multiple locations around the curve. As a check, flip the top back side up. The collar seam should align to the shoulder seam. Sew with a stretch stitch or a serger around the neckline.
For the optional zipper stop, we first need to get an accurate zipper length. To do this, you'll need a ruler of some kind and a pen. Measure from the bottom of your basted rectangle to the top of the collar. Start with that measurement and subtract 3 eighths of an inch for the inner collar seam allowance. If using the optional zipper guard, subtract an additional quarter inch. Take that length and measure the same distance from the top of the teeth down the length of the zipper and place a mark. Place a second mark one quarter inch above the first line. Align the stop right side down to the top line and pin in place. Sew across the stop with a one quarter inch seam allowance. Cut the zipper three quarters of an inch below the first lower mark. Fold the stop so it's right side up. If not doing the zipper guard, wrap the garage around the bottom of the zipper to encase the raw end and pin or baste in place down the side of the zipper teeth. If doing a zipper guard, fold the stop down towards the bottom and cut an even length to eliminate bulk. Pin in place. At this point, the stop should be about one and a quarter inch. Iron the fusible interfacing to the wrong side of the zipper guard. Only half of the guard will have interfacing. Fold the guard in half lengthwise right sides together. Sew the curve with a straight stitch for reduced bulk using a 1 quarter inch seam allowance. Flip the guard so it's right side out. Finish down the length of the straight edge with a 1 quarter inch seam allowance using either a serger with a differential of 0 or a finishing stitch on a standard machine. With the finished straight edge to the right, fold the guard over at the notch and press. Fold the top of the zipper tape out of the way and align the top of the zipper teeth to the notch. Fold the curved top over. Secure the guard to the zipper tape with multiple pins or clips down the length. Baste stitch down the length of the zipper. Be sure to catch the zipper stop with your basting stitch. For extra stability and control sewing on a zipper, using presser tape can be extremely helpful. Cut a piece the length of your exposed zipper and press it to the edge of the zipper tape. To use, peel off the cover paper and expose the two-sided tape below. This will help hold the zipper in place as you press it to the right side of the cut center line of your bodice. Put tape on the other side of the zipper, but don't peel off the cover until you're ready to sew that side of the zipper down. The zipper install process is the same with or without the guard. Start on the left side of the top as worn. Place the zipper and optional guard 3 8 inch from the top of the collar, right side down, along the cut and interfaced center line. For this step, you can choose to use the presser tape to additionally secure the zipper, pin or clip down the length of the cut line. Sew down the length of the zipper with a longer 3.0 stitch length. 
Personally, I find it easier to sew with the zipper on top. For the left side of this top, that means sewing from the bottom of the basted rectangle up to the top of the zipper guard or teeth. Use either a zipper foot or shift your needle to the left and sew approximately 3 8 inch from the center line. Take your time and move slowly using the marks on your presser foot to keep the stitch line as straight as possible. Once the first side of the zipper is sewn, mark where the collar seam hits on the opposite side of the zipper tape. Unzip. If using presser tape, peel the paper now. Align the mark with the unsewn seam of the collar. Pin or clip down the length of the zipper. With the zipper on top, sew from the top of the teeth to the corner of the basted rectangle with a 3.0 stitch length. Sew the same distance from the teeth as you did on the first side of the zipper. Take your time and pause to move the zipper pull out of the way. Sew the full length of the zipper, catching the zipper stop. Once both sides of the zipper have been installed, flip the reef right side out to verify that you can see one half inch of the zipper stop. Flip up the bottom of the sweatshirt to expose the triangle from the bottom of your basted rectangle. Stitch a straight line directly on top of your previously basted line, catching the triangle, zipper, and zipper stop if being used. Keep the guard out of the way. If using optional twill tape or a fabric strip to conceal the zipper tape edge, pin it to the right side of the zipper. You will sew directly on top of the previous stitch line. If not using the optional zipper guard, repeat on the other side of the zipper. If choosing to finish the end with a finishing stitch or serger, do so now. Be sure to catch the zipper stop and guard if using. The inner collar can be attached as one step or two. For this video, we'll break it into two parts. Pin and sew the inner collar to the top, aligning at the middle back and center front. The raw edges of the inner and outer collar will align at the center. Sew around the collar seam with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. If using a serger for this step, use a straight stitch for the 1 inch before or after the zipper. Fold the inner collar over the outer collar. The zipper guard and zipper will be sandwiched in between the two collars. With the finished inner collar bottom edge folded 3 8 inch to the wrong side, align the folded edge to the outer collar seam. Repeat on the other side. Sew down the center line with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Be sure to keep the bottom edge of the folded inner collar turned up as you sew. Again, notice the first one inch before or after the zipper are sewn with a straight stitch. This allows us to clip the corners to minimize bulk. Flip the inner collar down right side out as worn. There are multiple methods to finish the inner collar. You can find tutorials on the GreenStyle YouTube page with multiple options. Turn the finished edge of the collar under, sew around the inner collar seam to secure the collar down. I've sewn mine by hand with a slip stitch for an invisible finish. Using presser tape on the wrong side of the optional twill tape or zipper tape in addition to pins to hold the zipper, tape, and main fabric together can be helpful in stabilizing for top stitching. 
top stitch up one side of the zipper, optionally sew around the top of the collar, and down the other side with a 3.5 stitch length. It can be a good idea to hand crank over the seam line to avoid dragging the line. Be sure to catch the optional twill tape that is concealing your zipper tape. Finish the sides of the pocket and the long curve of the pocket facing using a 1 quarter inch seam allowance. Align the short curve of the pocket facing to the short curve of the pocket right sides together. Surge or stretch stitch with a 1 quarter inch seam allowance. Finish the top of the pocket line, including the top of the pocket facing, with a 1 quarter inch seam allowance. Turn the facing wrong sides together and top stitch along the long curve of the pocket edge. For this step, it's recommended to use a 3.5 stitch length and a walking foot. Place the pocket upside down, right sides together along your horizontal marking. Align the center of the pocket to the center of the zipper. Make sure the pocket is centered on the bodice as well. To check the pocket is in the correct spot, pin the pocket 3 8 inch from the edge of the finished pocket and flip it down. The top of the pocket should be at the bottom of the zipper stop and the bottom of the pocket should be aligned with the bottom of the bodice. Flip the pocket back up and sew with a walking foot or narrow stretch stitch using a 3 8 inch seam allowance, back stitching at the start and finish. You will be catching the bottom of your zipper and zipper guard as you sew over the mid pocket, so take your time. Turn the pocket down and top stitch the sides by turning them under 3 8 of an inch and sewing with a 1 quarter inch seam allowance. Top stitch across the top of the pocket with a long stitch and a 1 quarter inch seam allowance. Once the optional pocket is on, place sleeves and bodice right sides together and sew up the side and down the sleeve with a serger or stretch stitch using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Repeat on the other side. Place the front and back waistband right sides together. Serge or stretch stitch on the short ends.
Fold in half, wrong sides together along the length, and mark the center front and back. Align the waistband to the bodice at the front and back center and side seams. Pin in multiple locations around the waistband. The waistband side seam will be angled while pinned. Stretch the waistband slightly as you sew with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. This sew along will follow the steps for the thumb hole cuffed option. Fold the cuff, right sides together along the length, aligning all notches. Sew from the edge of the cuff to the first notch, skip notch 2 to 3, sew 3 to 4, skip 4 to 5, and sew 5 to the edge cuff. Using a narrow stretch stitch of 1 to 1 and a half width and 1 stitch length, Sew with a 3 8 inch seam allowance, being sure to back stitch at all starting stopping points. Iron the seam allowance open so it stays flat. Fold the cuff in half again, right sides out aligning the openings and sewn sections. Flip the cuff right side out. It will take some time and patience, but fold the seam allowance flat within the cuff as they finish. Once the seam allowances are flat, reach in between the layers and pinch the seam allowance. Pull the pinched seam out through the bottom of the cuff and pin or clip the opening. Sew the opening closed with a 3 8 inch seam allowance narrow stretch stitch. Return the cuff to right side out and repeat on the other side of the thumb hole. Flip the cuff right side out and you have a simple thumb hole cuff. Align the thumb seam one half inch to the front of the underarm seam. Pin the cuff around the opening, spacing the stretch evenly. Sew around the cuff with a serger or stretch stitch. Repeat on the other side. And with that, you've completed your Reef Sweatshirt. We'd love to see your makes using the hashtag GSReefSweatshirt. Happy sewing, friends!